right, if you're already there, hopefully you didn't lose your spot yet, but if you look at verse 7, Mark chapter 7, verse 7, it says, how, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And the title of the message is The Commandments of Men. That's what we're going to be talking about. It's interesting, in, in Iola on Wednesday nights, I've been going through the commandments of God, and we're doing a series going through primarily uh, right now looking at the Ten Commandments, but just basically just an overview of God's mind when He gives commandments and how we're supposed to read those in the Bible. And it's been a, a good little story study that we've gone through but so far, but then uh, today I want to talk about commandments of men. Totally different thing, uh, but something that actually a lot of times it seems almost like people get confused. Which are the commandments of God and which are the commandments of men? And so I want to preach a message about the commandments of men. And really this is only, this phrase is used three times in the Bible. Once is where we just read it. Now I would say uh, actually four times because it's also in Matthew, but Matthew and Mark uh, pretty much saying the same thing. I decided to stick with uh, Mark's account here in Mark 7. Then this another time it's used is in Colossians 2, and it would probably help for the way I'm going to do the sermon if you can mark all these three spots because we're going to go back and forth to them. So Mark 7, mark that if you would. I ran out of ribbons. I've only got two ribbons, so then I had to get another piece of paper to mark my spot here. But I got Mark 7 and then Colossians 2. Colossians 2, if you look at verse 16, Colossians 2, 16 says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath, hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment uh, ministered and knit together, increased with uh, increase of God. And so uh, that's this next but well let me read a couple more verses wherefore if ye be dead with christ from the rudiments of this world why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances touch not taste not handle not which are which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. We're going to look at some of those phrases that might have stuck, stood out at you as awkward or, or what in the world does that mean? We'll look at some of those here in a minute. So that's Colossians chapter 2. And now Titus, if you'll mark Titus, we'll go back and forth between these three different places. Titus uh, 1. So you see Mark talked about the traditions of the elders. It talked about how... Uh, uh, you know, you must wash your hands or something that they did. It talked about the ceremonial washings of cups, pots, brazen vessels, and tables. These were the main things he was talking about, but Jesus said these are the commandments of men that they're worried about. In Colossians, what we just read, focused primarily on meats and drinks and uh, ceremonial, uh, like for, uh, uh, celebrating holy days, new moon, Sabbath days. And he said, these are all the commandments of men. In Titus chapter 1, verse 10, starting in verse 10, he says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. It's talking about Jewish believers of that time. Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. I'm not sure what a slow belly is, but I think I probably got one. <laughs> Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may uh, be sound in the faith. Listen to verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and the commandments of men that turn from the truth. 
Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in words they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. All right, so we're going to look at these three different places and talk about what the Bible says about the commandments of men. I think there's a few things that we can understand from these and kind of apply to ourselves. And I, I thought about this, and at the conclusion, I was going to give like a bunch of examples of what people teach as the as the commandments of I mean, the commandments of men, they teach them as the doctrines of God. And I decided to shy away from that. And I have a, a, a good reason for that. You know, I could list a whole bunch of things, but what I'm going to end up probably doing is being in my own mind, you know, trying to tell you which things are the commandments of God and which things are the commandments of men. And there are some things where you are going to have to decide that for yourself, right? And what I would rather do to accomplish with this message is to show you some principles that the Bible shows so that you can recognize those and say, you know, I got to be careful about these things, right? Now, we uh, believe in uh, preaching the gospel, going door to door, preaching the simplicity of the gospel, right? We all know how easy it is to get derailed and to get caught up on these secondary issues that aren't important. They're great to talk about. They're fun to talk about. Hey, after we after Thursday nights, we've been eating. We've been sitting back there talking. Great to talk about all these things, okay? At the door, though, if people bring this up and you fall down the rabbit trail of preaching these uh, or, or, or t discussing these certain things, whatever they are, <laughs> it could take you from something far more important, right? You're supposed to be preaching the gospel and you can get derailed on these secondary things. If the church, uh, if you go to church and the preacher is preaching and he's supposed to be teaching you how to live for the Lord and how to live your life and to be holy, be pure, you know, uh, uh, dedicated unto the Lord, all these kinds of things. And, if, and instead he derails and he's constantly caught up on these certain hobby horses that he has that aren't even necessarily in the Bible, uh, right? It could just dis dis it could de distract from preaching the truth of God's word. And so I think it's important that we look at all these things and see uh, what the Bible has to say. Now, with turning back and forth as much as we are, it could be a little bit distracting and uh, difficult to do. And I hope I'm, I hope it won't be. Hopefully marking those will help you with this. But let's start, start first <clears throat> with the first point, which is this. The commandments of men are vain. Okay. Now, vain, you understand, we tip, typically in our society think of vain as someone who looks at themselves in the mirror and, you know, vanity. But typically, really what that word is talking about is just being without worth, okay? It's empty, it's vain. Uh, you know, it doesn't have a real worth, real value. And this is what we're talking about. The commandments of men are vain in God's eyes. Now, sometimes we put a lot of emphasis on the commandments of men. Uh, but in reality, the commandments of men are vain. Look at Mark. First off, Mark chapter 7. <laughs> Verse 6 says, he, and he, uh, it says, He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines uh, the commandments of men. Now, you caught this. This is a quote. Jesus is quoting from the book of Isaiah. And now when you read it in Isaiah, it doesn't sound exactly like what he just quoted, but the principle of what he's saying is exactly the same. Let me read Isaiah 29, verse 13. It says, Wherefore the Lord saith, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far, far from me, and their fear toward me, that's like worship, right? Their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of man, commandments of men. Okay, so same print, he's saying the same thing. Uh, he doesn't use the word vanity in there, but he's saying, look, their heart is removed far from me. And their worship, you know, is just the, is just the precepts of man. None of this actually has value. You know, you're coming to God with these man-made rules, man-made laws, man-made commandments. Those, aren't, those don't mean anything in God's mind. You know, so a good example here is in Mark is, is these uh, Pharisees come to Jesus 
He's preaching the gospel. He's preaching, you know, how they should live. He's going back. I mean, he, he knew from the time he was 12 years old, he knew how to reason with the scholars about the Old Testament. I mean, he knew the Bible and he's quoting scripture. He's doing all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, the, the Jewish Pharisees at that time, you know, what do they want to do? They want to come to him and, and try to find something that he's doing wrong. And so they said, hey, why aren't your disciples washing their hands before they eat? Now, I do believe in washing your hands before you eat, okay? <laughs> I try to wash my hands before I eat, you know, and I think it's good practice, hygiene, you know, and all this. But really what Jesus teaches here is pretty profound. He's saying, you know, hey, look, that's not really that important. He says what goes into the body isn't what's important. That's not, that's not going to defile the man. You know, what comes out of the mouth defiles the man. And so, uh, and so he, he's making a really good point. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm not making a big point on this. Okay, this isn't, uh, this is kind of like, I'm stepping aside from the pulpit. For a second. I'm not making a big point on this, but I will tell you this. We think, oh, we got science all figured out and we're so smart these days and they didn't know what they were talking about, about back then. Just think about this for a second, okay? Now, I'm, again, I wash my hands. I recommend it, okay? <laughs> but isn't it funny in our society today, We've got like this, we got, we take away all the things. God gave us a natural ability, a natural immune system, right? He gave us a, an incredible immune system. And what we do is we try to eliminate everything that is designed to build that immune system. We're just taking, you know, uh, bleach and we're cleaning everything and we're taking, a, a, you know, Purell and we're taking a bath in Purell and, and we're getting rid of all the bacteria and all that kind of stuff, all the germs, and then what do we do? We're like, man, my immune system stinks. I got to get some vitamins. And so they're like, hey, we got sick people. So we got to start uh, putting in, uh, vitamins into all the cereal and all the food that they eat. We're just going to put vitamins in there. And we take all these things like to help boost our immune system. And it's like, really, God gave us immune systems to take care of those things, you know? And so the principle is well, a lot of times, hey, well, you got the flu. You know, hey, here's what we do. You don't want to get the flu, so we'll give you some a little bit of flu, and they'll give you the vaccine. Look, we don't know what all's in that. Some people know more of what's in it than others. They've studied that or whatever. But the principle is we'll give you that so that your body can build that. And it's almost like, isn't that exactly what happens when the flu goes around and some people get sick and then their body learns how to fight it? And then before you know it, uh, people will build up an immunity and they don't have it. You understand where I'm going with this? Don't make me start talking about COVID now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now back to the <laughs> back to the Bible. I don't think he was trying to teach science here, but he was saying, "Hey, you you know, who cares if they wash their hands?" Right? That's not that's not important. Now, we tend to put a big emphasis on hygiene and appearance and all that stuff. And I would suspect there are some churches that would kick somebody out because they're too dirty, too stinky, don't clean up after themselves. You say nobody would ever do that. Sure they would. Sure they would. I know churches that would kick somebody out because their perfume's too strong. <laughs> Instead of just going to them and saying, hey, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, there's things, people put a lot of importance on certain things. And they don't put any value on the soul and the judgment and the, uh, the, 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 the God, the more weightier things. Right? Remember when the Pharisees, uh, you know, Jesus said, hey, you guys tithe your mint and your cumin and all these spices. He says, but you neglect the weightier matters, judgment and, and righteousness and faith. I think I said, <laughs> said that right. And he, you understand what, he, what he's saying right there. And so when they come in and they're talking about, here's what the Pharisees want to talk about, the traditions of the elders. It's important. Why are you doing something differently than the elders did it? Do it, you know? Why don't you wash your hands? Why don't you ceremonial, ceremonially wash your cups and your pots and your bread? Again, I think you should do your dishes, okay? I mean, don't just let your dog lick your plates and be like, hey, it's clean, you know? <laughs> but why well, everybody got real quiet for me? I'm just, that was a joke. Okay? I don't even have a dog, so if you if you come to my house, it's clean dishes. But you understand what I'm saying? It's like it's, it's it's like he's saying, like, who cares about all those things? Who cares how clean your house is? And again, I think you should have a clean house. I think it's godly. Cleanliness is next to godliness. No, that's not in the Bible. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but from a human standpoint, it's a good idea. Okay, so here he says in uh in the Mark, he says that in vain they do worship me. Then look at verse 8. 
Mark 7, verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things you do. Here, uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're in Colossians now. Go to Colossians. I'm ready to move to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Now look at verse 8. Colossians 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the wor wor world, and not after Christ. He talks about these uh, being uh, vainly puffed up and uh, following vain uh, deceit. Okay, Where's the vainly puffed up? I, I, I must not have written that down. Eighteen. Thank you. Verse eighteen. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humil humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things uh, which ye uh, which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So we're talking about vanity. We're talking about that which is empty. And when you talk about vanity and emptiness, a uh, great picture is something that's puffed up, something that's just full of air right? It's just empty. It's vain. There's no value inside it. It just looks good. Uh, it's a facade. Have you, I don't know if you've ever seen maybe pictures of a, of a set like in Hollywood where they just got done filming some, uh, some set and there's like this big tank in the background and then it's like cut and then two guys pick up that tank, right? Because it's not really a tank. It's just a facade. It's really just full of air, full of nothing. Well, there are religious people out there who have all the commandments of, of men down, and they can just, you know, come off and impress you and say the right words, dress the right way, look the right way. It's all vanity. It's just yeah. puffed up. It's just nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Okay. And it's really hard sometimes as a Christian to, dis to distinguish that and say, you know what? That's great. It's all, you know, it's not wrong for you to dress that way, to look that way, talk that way, do that. It's good for you to do those things. It's good for you to wash your hands. <laughs> it's good for you to, uh, to wash your pots and do your dishes and all that kind of stuff. But those aren't the weightier matters. Those aren't the things that matter. And so uh, we have to realize that those are commandments of men, things that are vain, things that are puffed up. Okay, that says they're puffed up by their fleshly mind. You know what, they, what that means? It's like they're not worried about the spiritual things. They're worried about the, the carnal things, right? It's their fleshly mind. That's what they're worried about, the, the carnal things, not the spiritual things. Matthew 23, 23 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. This is what I was trying to quote a minute ago. Hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. I thought I got that wrong. And then he says this, These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. He's like, it's not wrong that you're tithing. You know, it's not wrong that somebody's like, well, you know, should we tithe on the gross or the net? You know, the stimulus package come in. Should I tithe on the stimulus package? And there are people that make such a big deal about that and try to get all these kind of things. And so you're, some of you are already like, what's your opinion on that? Look, those are not the weightier <laughs> matters of the heart, okay? Uh, so uh, we're not too worried about that. He said, those you ought to have done. He said, but don't leave the other things undone. See, 99% of Christianity focuses on the commandments of, of men and the appearance and the fleshly mind and all those kinds of things. And they leave out the most important things. And these are uh, the things that matter the most. Okay, so Mark says the same thing about vanity. Colossians says the same thing about vanity. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, look at verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they have the circumcision. He's saying that there are those who are vain talkers. They talk and talk and talk, but it's all vanity. It's all puffed up, meaningless jibber jabber. Okay, And they talk it and it's all uh, vain. And it says it's all, here's another word, it's all fluff. You ever heard that? Someone's talking and it's all fluff. You know, there are some great, speakers, I guess preachers too, but they're great speakers that can get up before a crowd and they can just give all the fluff, right? And impress everybody say, that was such a great speech. But if you really broke it down, they didn't say anything. 
Anybody thinking about politics right now? <laughs> it's like, that didn't even mean anything, but everybody's like, oh, did you hear what he said? It's so, so brilliant, you know? And then you get somebody else that's not so brilliant, but maybe they say some good things, you know what I mean? The matter is the content, okay? What is actually trying to, uh, to get across? And again, it's good, let's say, for pastors, for instance, to be well-polished to some degree and to actually be able to, uh, you know, speak properly. You're looking at a bad example right now, but it's good to be kind of polished and all that, but that's not the wager to think. That's not what's so important, right? That's not the most important thing. We don't want somebody who could just get up and give a lot of fluff. How many of you guys uh, were good test takers whenever you were a student? Hardly anybody. Two hands, both women, of course. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was not a good test taker, but I tell you what I could do is I could do the essay. <laughs> Because I didn't have a clue what I was talking about, but I put a lot of fluff in there. But if you had a teacher that was really worth their salt that actually read the essay questions, they'd give me a bad grade on it. If you had someone that's like, I'm not going to read all that. It sounds like they know what they're talking about. Then you could get by, right? Because fluff sometimes will impress somebody. But if you really look into the inside, it's just meaning and vanity. Okay, so we want to be very careful about that. Mark, Colossians, Titus all says the same thing. All right, number two. So the first one was that the commandments of men are vain. They hold no real value. Number two, the commandments of men are all for a show. Now, uh, kind of overlapping a little bit. Some of this is, is kind of saying the same thing. But look, not only is it meaningless and empty, but really it's just for a show. Again, that's what the physical appearance is. You know, you're all worried about the outside appearance. Remember Jesus said to the Pharisees, hey, you're like whited sepulchers. You know, you got on the outside of the tomb or, you know, a sepulcher is a tomb where you bury the people. On the outside of the grave, you got, it's all painted white and it looks all pretty and all that stuff. But really, roll that stone away and go inside. You got dead men's bones. You know, it's, it's nastiness inside. But you're all worried about the outside. Or he talks about, hey, you know, you clean, you polish the outside of the cup and make it look real shiny and real nice. But the inside is, is dirty, right? And so, uh, so we can understand what Jesus is, is trying to say. And he says uh, here in Mark chapter 7, uh, look at verse 10. And of course, we know that the Pharisees were all about show. We know they were hypocrites. The Bible says that they love to be seen of men. They love to make their prayer, long prayers so everybody can hear them. They love to walk around with their long robes and garments. And they like to, the titles, you know, call me father, call me uh, uh, rabbi, master. And they love to be seen of men. When they fasted, you know, they, they made their face look bad. So people said, wow, that guy's really suffering for the Lord. And it was just all a show. You know, when they, uh, when they gave their alms, that's why Jesus was specifically saying, hey, just do it in secret. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing, right? And just do it in secret when you give your alms. There's somebody begging there at the temple. You're going in the temple. You don't have to be like, oh, you know what? Let me wait till a crowd builds up real quick and then... You know, get out this uh, this cash and and like let's take a selfie and put it on Facebook. And I guess they didn't do that back then, but you <laughs> you understand what I mean, don't you? Get sick of people like that? Like, oh look, I just dropped a hundred dollar bill to help that waitress out. Well, yeah, you just lost your reward sharing it with everybody <laughs> on social media, right? <laughs> because it's all show. And when people start teaching the commandments of men as the doctrines of God, then it is all for show every time. Okay, and so uh, look at verse 10 and 12. Did I already read that? I'm not even in the right place. Matthew, I mean, Mark 7, 10 through 12. And Moses, for Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But uh, ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, th that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, uh, he shall be free and ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. So here's the idea here. Uh, I'll read the rest of that later, but here's the idea. Okay. So you got these Pharisees and here's what they would do. They, they know that Moses taught you're supposed to honor your mother and your father. Okay. So part of honoring your mother and father would be like, Hey, they're destitute. Maybe they don't have uh, the money anymore. They're at the end of their life, maybe not physically able to do things. Well, it was your job to help them out. 
Okay, so the Pharisees could have helped them financially, gave them a place to stay, gave them food or whatever. But here's what the Pharisees would do instead. They would say, you know what? I can't give that thing that would profit you that you're wanting from me, the money. You know, I can't give that to you because it's a gift. It's supposed to be given to God, right? I can't help you because I have to give this to God. And if you say that, then you are set free from that responsibility of helping your, uh, honoring your parents in that way. Okay, I think that's the principle of what he's talking about. So, so here they say, and what they did after that with the money, I don't know, but they said, hey, I can't give it to you because this goes to God. And there's this big show, right? Like, oh, I can't, I can't, I got to give all my money to God. It reminds me of Ananias and Sapphira. Like, all they cared about was a big show. Hey, look, we sold all of our property and we gave it to the poor here, here, or, or we're giving it to the poor. Here it is right here. Here's all of our money. But really, it was all a show, right? They didn't even really give all the money that they said they were going to give, but that wasn't even the important part. The important part was they were lying and saying that they were doing all this great thing, which God had never even told them to do. And it was all for show. They were, they were uh, wanting to be seen of men. It was all fluff. So people teach the commandments of men. Rest assured, according to the Bible, we'll see that it is uh, something, is just a show and, uh, and it's, a, it's something that's deceptive. They're, uh, they're tricking you into like thinking that they're, they're very righteous. Okay? We call that holier than thou. Right? You look at that person, man, they've got their life all together. Well, that's fine. They should have their life all together. They should do all those things. It's not wrong for somebody to be righteous and holy and live right for God. But when they start saying, hey, you need to do this like I do. You need to look like me. You need to be. Now we're getting into an idea where this person is trying to put on a show and they want to look good. They don't really care about you. So, so this is one of the reasons, biggest reasons I hate the Lordship Salvation uh, crowd in that teaching because that's all show. It's yeah. saying, hey, you can't be saved unless you look like me. What you just got done saying is that I look great. <laughs> I'm a righteous person. You got to look righteous like me whenever you get saved. No, that's not what the Bible says, okay? Right. And so we've got to be very careful that we don't listen to people who are just teaching the commandments of men for a show. Look at uh, Colossians now. Colossians chapter 2, look at verse 23. He says, uh, well, let me back up some for context. It says uh, in verse 20, Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to, the ordin to ordinances? Talk about the ordinances of man. Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Say, he said, uh, it's, a, it's a show. It's a show of wisdom in uh, will worship. I'll get to will worship in a, uh, in a second, but uh, in the next point. But let's go first to Titus. All right, Titus chapter 1. <clears throat> Titus chapter 1, where'd my paper go? Okay. Titus chapter 1, verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Now, this is a really bad crowd, that it's not just like a show trying to make themselves look good, but they're literally trying to deceive people, all right? And so he talks about this uh, deceivers. Look at verse 11. It tells you why they're deceiving, uh, whose mouths must be stopped to subvert... Uh, uh, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. You know, they want to make the money, so they're deceiving with all of these uh, commandments of men. Like, you know, uh, what's that, that doctrine in the prosperity gospel, the seed doctrine or whatever? Like they're saying, hey, you know, God's going to bless you if you just give me this much money. The more you give of a seed, the bigger your blessings are going to be or whatever. Obviously, commandments of men, and they're just doing it to deceive because they want filthy lucre, okay? And so this is definitely uh, what's going on. They subvert whole houses, uh, and, uh, and let me see here. For filthy lucre's sake, verse 15. Let me see here. We see, oh, oh I'm in the wrong verse. 
look at verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Okay, so this is the worst crowd that we're talking about here that's teaching these things as lies, and they're just trying to uh, uh, get filthy lucre. And, uh, and as a as a result, they're they're deceiving um, mass crowds of people. Okay, so let's move on to number th three. All right, they're vain, have no value. Uh, we talked about they are just for show. Number three, the commandments of men turn people from the truth. This is what I was talking about. Like if you just if you walk away from teaching the truth, what God wants us to teach, and you start going down all these other uh, rabbit trails, it takes away from the truth. That's, uh, that's one way to interpret that, okay? Uh, so let's go through this again. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, <clears throat> verse 13. This is when he's talking about those Pharisees who, who, who say, oh, it's Corbin, it's a gift, you know? And uh, they're making all these lies and everything. He says uh, that you're making, in verse 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such, uh, many such like things ye do. Okay, so all these things that they're doing uh, by their traditions and, and for whatever their motivation is, whether it's to get uh, uh, filthy lucre or whatever, what they're doing is they're, they're making the word of God of none effect. Uh, if you watch the lives of the holier than thou type uh, people, you know, uh, you usually find out that they're not focusing on the most important truths of the Bible. You know, they're just all they're just focusing on other things. And I don't know if it's just obviously the, the devil's happy by that, but I don't know if it's just like the the influence of, of Satan. You know, and, and these people are just doing Satan's work as they're getting derailed by all these things. Uh, and every time we go out soul winning, I, you know, we pray that God will help us and give us wisdom, lead us by the Holy Spirit. And really, that's one thing we need to watch out for. Say, God, help me not to just fall into these traps that are going to lead me away from doing what I'm here for. Now, it's really important that you, you know, be polite to the people and all that. And, and, and that, I think those things are important. But again, the reason you're there is to give them the truth. And however, whatever it takes for you to get that truth to them, you know, and, uh, and uh, we do obviously want to leave the door open so somebody else can come by if they don't receive that. So we don't want to just close the door and look, you know, leave a bad taste in their mouth. But our idea that what we're wanting to do is not get distracted and we want to be able to present them the gospel, not get hung up on all these secondary issues that aren't important. Now in church, in a church situation when I'm preaching, you know, I'm not preaching the gospel for the most part because I expect everybody in here saved. And if you're not, you know, hopefully somebody's going to ask you if you're saved and you're going to find out, you know, uh, and you're wondering why these guys are going out soul winning and all this stuff. We're hoping that everybody that ends, ends up being in this church is saved. Okay. So I have a little bit of di different purpose whenever I'm preaching, but you know what? I got to preach what the Bible says and not get off on a hobby horse, not get off on politics. There's a lot of churches that just preach the whole message, like 90% of the message is just politics. You know, or some kind of weird thing that they discovered, you know, that they can't wait to show everybody this weird thing. that's like you're not really edifying anybody. <laughs> All you're doing is you're puffed up and showing everybody some brilliant thing that you have, which really when you dissect it, it's nothing. <laughs> it's pointless. You know, I don't care if, if, uh, uh, if the temple is in Saturn. <laughs> It's only some of you guys are going to understand that. But, uh, but you know, I don't care. Don't preach a whole message about that. Don't preach about when the next temple is going to be built or, or all this stuff and preach an entire message about that. It doesn't profit anybody anything. Okay? So we got to be careful we don't get distracted by those things and not do what we're supposed to do, which is preach the truth. Okay, uh, Colossians 2. We're talking about the fact that it, the commandments of men turn people from the truth. Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up uh, with his fleshly mind. Notice it says beguiling you. Okay, they're beguiling. They're tricking you. Uh, they're tricking you out of your reward. 
Now, here's something interesting. I wanted to bring this up because these phrases are a little bit, uh, you know, maybe you don't, it, it's, when you first read it, you're like, what does that mean? I, even, I was even scratching my head for a minute saying, what does this mean? Worshiping angels, obviously we know what that means. That's crazy, <laughs> right? But you know, I've actually, I actually, uh, I used to listen to, I don't much anymore because it's hardly anything worth listening to, but I used to listen to talk radio, uh, pr you know, preachers on talk radio. And I would listen and be like, you know, I can, you know, eat the meat and spit out the bones and I can get some good stuff out of it or whatever. But I pretty much decided I'm just not even, it's not even worth it. <laughs> okay? But I used to listen to some preaching and there was this guy that got up there and I don't even remember, uh, I don't remember his name. He's, he, he died. I remember he had a really deep voice. And, uh, and he got up there and he's preaching this message. Man, this guy sounds like he knows what he's talking about. And then he said he's preaching on the different uh, uh, ranks of angels, right? And so he talks about how these angels are higher authority than these angels. And then you have these types of angels and the cherubim are right here and the seraphim are right here. And I'm like, this is all stuff he made up. <laughs> None of this is in the Bible. Maybe he got these from secondary sources, Jewish fables, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But where did he get all this stuff? I don't know. And why he preached a whole hour message on different ranks of angels. It didn't edify anybody anything, right? And so, uh, so the worshiping of angels, we understand. But here's what I want you to notice, too. Go back to verse 18. What is a voluntary humility? Voluntary humility. Well, think about what, what, it, what it means. Like when I first read that, it didn't seem to make sense. But when you think about that, it means it's voluntary, right? It, it, it's forced. It's something that they're making. It's not a real humility. <laughs> That's what it means is a voluntary humility. It's not true. The Holy Spirit didn't work on somebody's heart. And then they were just like, you know what? I need to humble myself and, and you can get that right or whatever. But no, they are just pretending to be humble, right? They're making themselves be humble. And look, there's a lot of Christians out there with the false humility, right? It's a, it's a, it's a forced kind of humility that they have. And we can all fall into it. Like, I'm not going to stand here and act like I've never done it before. Uh, you just start saying, amen, brother. And, you know, you just start saying all the right words. And you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't say nice things about me. I don't deserve it. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can easily do that. And then you really think about it. You're like, you know what? There was a lot of fakeness going on there, <laughs> you know? So a, uh, a uh, willful... I mean, a voluntary humility. And then look at the, uh, let me see here. This is also talking about the same thing. Look at verse 23. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship. Okay. But so what is will worship? Saying the same thing. It's, it's of, the will, of their own will, right, that they're worshiping. But it's voluntary. And then it goes on. Of will worship. And I think the way to read this, the understanding is that now will is still talking about the, the next thing. So will worship and then also will humility, right? Same idea that, it, that we just talked about. It's this false thing that they forced up. They manufactured their worship. They manufactured their humility. Have you ever watched guys, uh, um, you know, if you have, I'm sorry that you had to endure it. But you watch guys at like a, one of the contemporary type churches with the smoke in the background, the lights and all that kind of stuff. I don't know why I'm picking on that particular setup, but you understand what I'm saying. When they get up there and they're raising their hands and they're swaying to the music and tears are coming down and the preacher gets up there and he's in tears and he's like, man, you just got to give your life to the Lord. That kind of preaching has been driving me nuts. <laughs> People keep sharing these clips, and I'm just like, hey, let's see what this preacher has to say. And he's crying. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, it just looks so fake. You're saying, man, you're being judgmental. Probably, but it just looks so fake. And we know the Bible says that there are people out there that fake it. We know there are people out there that are just, this is just will worship. Is my nose bleeding? I don't know. Maybe it's marker. Maybe because I, earlier I felt like my nose was bleeding, and I started to say, just a minute, I need a tissue. We'll see. If it starts pouring down in a minute, it's the devil, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. I won't talk about the preachers that cry anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just teasing. All right. So, uh, but here, let's go on to Colossians. Oh, I mean, we are in Colossians. Let's go on to, no, 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 we got to read another verse. Look at verse 19. 19 says, uh, okay, it talks about the, their beguiling of your reward, uh, their 
they're intruding into those things which uh, he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Verse 19 says this, and not holding the head. Notice that head is capitalized. You know, they're not really concerned about Christ. He's the head of the church, right? They're not really concerned about the Lord. They're concerned about themselves. Not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment, uh, nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the wisdom of God. Okay, and so they're not holding the head. Verse 23 talks about how they are... Uh, uh, they're not, they're, they're satisfying the flesh. Okay. Uh, uh, the honor, uh, not in any honor to the satisfying. Okay. Not in any honor. And then it says to the satisfying of the flesh. That's what they're trying to do. It's kind of like teachers. I mean, uh, uh, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, right? They want teachers that are going to scratch their ears and same kind of idea. Let's look at Titus now. Titus chapter one, almost done here. Sorry, I lost my, my marker. Titus chapter 1, look at verse 11. We're talking about the fact that they turn people from the truth, okay? Verse 11, uh, it says, Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they are, they are not. They're subverting whole houses. By the way, it should make you mad that false prophets are leading people astray. It should make you mad that they're subverting houses and they're, they're teaching false doctrines and they're leading people away from the truth. That should make you mad. That's okay. Okay. And, uh, and so verse 13 talks about that. Verse uh, thir I mean, verse 11 talks about that. Verse 13 says, This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Okay. That's what we're supposed to do. Somebody's teaching, you know, all these uh, uh, commandments of men and whatever, and they're and they're subverting people from the truth. Rebuke them sharply, why? Because we want to make sure the truth's being preached. We want to make sure houses aren't being subverted, and so uh, rebuke them sharply. Okay. And then finally, verse fourteen, it says that they uh, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Now, I've hit on this lately. I don't know if it was here in Iola, but this keeps coming to me because I'm talking about, lately I'm, I'm studying a lot of, uh, about, like last week here I on Sunday, I talked about Bible colleges and I've been talking about theology and systematic theology and the dangers really of reading the works of men. Now, some men gave their life to studying certain things and it's, and it's helpful to others to maybe read and to learn from that and pick up where they left off. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't discount any, any of that kind of stuff. But here's why it's so dangerous, because if you've ever read commentaries, right, they're really not, they're usually not really comparing Scripture with Scripture and finding out what the Bible says. They're going to ancient writings, okay? And I'm going to tell you, m most of the time, if you start going through some of these commentaries, they'll say like, well, this this Jewish rabbi, you know, he said this, and, and they're Jewish, and so they would know the Jewish custom of the days. Look, they teach all kinds of lies. <laughs> the Jewish fables, like, don't believe the Jewish fables. They've, they, they, they believe some really weird stuff. And I'm not interested in picking up the Talmud and reading the Talmud, so why would I want to read after Jewish scholars for edification on my Bible reading? <laughs> right? And so, uh, so we need to stay away from the Jewish fables, okay? And they're going to lead people the wrong path. There are people that are so caught up and they love Judaism so much that they want to be Jews and they get caught up in all these practices and all that and stuff. Guess what? They're leading people astray. They're leading people from the truth. And we don't want to be any part of that. We want to actually rebuke those uh, sharply. But the commandments of men are not the commandments of God by any stretch of the imagination, okay? The, uh, God has plenty of commandments in the Bible for us to follow. And if you, keep your, if you live a life saying, hey, what does the Bible say about how I should live, how I should be holy, what I should do, you know? Uh, and you're looking at the Bible with how, how can the Bible edify me, 
you really don't have any time in your life to go off and check out the commandments of men and add to the, you know, this is what, this is what the Jews did as well is back in the, uh, you know, uh, in that intertestamental period, you know, where the ta ta Talmud and all these different books are being written and all that kind of stuff, you know, you find out you have the Old Testament law, God's blessing, He's sending His word to the prophets and all that kind of stuff. But by the time you get to the New Testament and Jesus is dealing with the Pharisees, They've added all these laws that were not in the Old Testament. You know, instead of saying, hey, you know, uh, honor the Sabbath, you know, don't do any work on the Sabbath day. They're doing, well, you can do X amount of steps, right? But no more than that. You can only do this many steps and you can only go up. I mean, it's kind of weird today. Today, man, I don't remember how some of these weird practices, they can only go so up so far in the elevator or something like that. And, and then you got to walk the rest of the way or, you know, they just, all these weird things because this mindset is adding to the word of God. Why? Well, it's puffed up. It doesn't mean anything. It's all for show, right? And it diverts people away. Sometimes with a, with a bad motivation because they want filthy lucre or they just hate the Lord and they want to turn people away from or whatever. And sometimes it's innocent and people just fall down these traps of falling into the commandments of God and we need, uh, of men. And we need to be careful because they're leading people astray. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you help us to be a so sober mind and, uh, and to be thinking about the, uh, your word. And there's plenty in your word that we don't understand and that we have to leave uh, a big question mark in our minds about what certain things say or why uh, you have us do certain things. But I pray you help us follow to the best of our ability your word and help us not get off course and following the commandments of men and uh, following fables and, and uh, things that you never expect, you never told us to. And definitely, Lord, help, definitely help us never... Uh, put up ourselves on a pedestal and the way we've chosen to live and our preference, preferences and our standards and convictions and start forcing those upon others as if, as if these are the word of God and that people have to live just like us. Help us have mercy and grace and help us stand by the truth and preach the truth. And I pray you bless us as we do that and you be glorified by it in Jesus' name. Amen.